Hey guys, how's it going? We're in front of the chicken coop this morning getting ready to do some planting. The coop is pretty much done on the outside anyway. Just got the shutters installed yesterday and it's looking a little bit more put together. Now I do have two Serbian spruces here on either side of the coop and that's going to be kind of my grounding formality for this area. And I was kind of like thinking, should I do more boxwood hedging? But I think what I want to do is keep this area a little bit more free and full of color. So I thought it'd be a really fun thing to show you guys some of the plants I'm putting in because I talk about recipes and containers all the time, like what plants to put together that look really good together and that are compatible. Um, so I want to do that today, showing you some really great things that attract butterflies in particular. Um, so we are going to be planting salvia, echinacea, and dahlias. I do want to talk to you about each one of the plants. So let's get set up and then we can talk about them. So the first one is called Delightful Lively Lavender. And you guys might remember I planted the Mystic Illusion Dahlia last year, which has really dark foliage and really bright yellow flowers. They performed so well. I'm really excited to give this variety a try and I love the color of the flowers. Um, so this one grows about two to three feet tall and about 20 inches wide. And I did look on the tag, they recommend spacing about like 12 to 16 inches. So I did put them quite close together. But honestly, of the three I'm gonna show you today, I think you could just do one of each in a little space, like maybe by a mailbox or tucked into a sunny spot in your landscape and you would get kind of the same effect. You would get all the color and the pollinator attracting quality. Um, so I think I've got six or so right back in here. The cool thing too about these dahlias is that they don't form, they were bred to not form tubers. They may form a few, but they won't form them like a normal dahlia will, which means you get earlier blooms in the season. So they'll start blooming really early and then they'll bloom all the way through frost because all of their energy gets sent into bloom production. You also don't have to deadhead them. You can, I, I tend to like to do that because it makes them look a little bit better. It will help them rebloom a little bit more, but it's not 100% necessary. They still will keep blooming. Um, and their foliage is resistant to disease, which I know that can be a problem like powdery mildew and things like that in some areas. Areas. The next flower are these beautiful bright yellow echinacea. They're called Yellow My Darling. They're actually new next year, this particular variety. Um, I was able to get my hands on a few of them to try them out in my garden to see how they grew and how they did. But I think it's going to be beautiful up here with this layer of bright pink and then the sunshine yellow. It's going to be so happy. These are a perennial. I don't think I mentioned that these are an annual. These are hardy to zone eight. Um, so they might be a perennial for some of you, but these are winter hardy down to a zone four. They're a zone four through eight. Um, so they do really well in our zone five garden, echinaceas in general. I don't have experience with this particular variety yet, but I've grown lots of different echinaceas and they're really reliable here. Also really great if you have bad soil. They're so adaptable to all different kinds of soil types. They can take a light amount of shade. They perform the best in a full sun area. Where we're at in front of the chicken coop gets shade in the morning, but it gets strong afternoon sun. Um, so I think that they're gonna do really, really well up here. They should perform nicely. They also attract pollinators, uh, bees and butterflies. So both of these are great for that. And the last flower in this kind of trio recipe of pollinator attracting plants is the the Glow Girl Salvia. We just did a video on these not too long ago. This is a new variety this year and I was so excited about it because they have such a striking bloom. They have a really thick bloom stalk, like it's really like big flowers. And then the calyx that holds the bloom onto the uh, stem is a little bit darker color. So when they are done blooming, they still kind of look like they're in bloom. So I don't feel like I'm in such a rush to get them deadheaded. Um, so these grow about 20 to 22 inches tall. And I don't think I mentioned these grow about 18 inches tall or so. So I should have kind of a nice stair step effect with this trio right here. Um, and these attract bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. So these should be just kind of like a powerhouse for pollinators, and I'm really excited about that. And the last thing, all three of these should be fairly compatible in terms of light and water. Like I said, they all perform in full sun, which they will get. Um, the echinacea and salvia can handle some drought, uh, but they do perform best when they get consistent moisture. Not a lot of moisture, but just consistent. The dahlias, however, I will make sure to uh, give consistent moisture to. I'll also give them more fertilizer. I'll be fertilizing these on a weekly basis when I come around to do all my containers. The echinacea and salvia, I'll be putting some starter fertilizer in the hole with them uh, today, and that'll probably be it for this year until I fertilize. Well, I may fertilize later on in the summer or again next spring. And for that, I would use a fertilizer like Plantone or Flower Tone. And you might notice a couple other things hanging out in this area. I'm just trying some stuff out. So I am going to be planting a climbing rose called Zephyrine Druin. I've got four of them that are going to be trained up the run and kind of over the roof. They're a thornless pink rose that bloom pretty much all summer. So we've got a lot of color there. 
I've got a purple fountain grass that I thought would be really pretty having a dark grassy texture right here and then a mist violet butterfly bush which I'm probably not going to plant today I'm just kind of I have it set there just to try it out um, so I just wanted to mention those three things because you will see those all right let's get these things in the ground turned out so cute. I love it. I think this is probably one of the most cheerful spots I have in my garden right now. And it's funny how one project, like just laying out some flowers, getting them in the ground, kind of snowballs into running all the drip irrigation, getting the mulch down and planting up my window box. Um, so I decided instead of putting any color in here in terms of blooms, just to do foliage. So these are three clipped sprinter boxwoods with Goldilocks Creeping Jenny planted underneath. And I think the um, Foliage colors contrast each other really nicely. And I think if I would have had color in here and a whole bunch of color down here, it would have been a little bit too much. Plus that brings a little bit more of a formal touch to the area and this uh, spot down below can just be free and con more country feel, um, a little bit more abundant with blooms. So I did end up planting the rose and the purple fountain grass, and then I'll kind of just keep moving down the way to finish up this whole area. I did figure out that I needed one more Indiglo girl salvia, so that's something I'm going to keep my eye out for it down at the garden center this season, just to finish my little trio. And then I will be probably incorporating that Miss Violet butterfly bush, another plant that attracts butterflies, and then possibly a small uh, ornamental, very small growing uh, evergreen for some evergreen interest in here. But my whole goal is just to kind of keep the area colorful and not too big. I don't want anything to really block the run too much. Um, so anyway, that's it. So if you guys are looking for some plants to attract butterflies, look for salvia, dahlias, and echinacea. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.